Well, four Republicans, as we mentioned, are hoping to unseat Governor Dayton in this November's election. We're inviting all four candidates who are running in the primary to appear here on At Issue. This week, it is former House Speaker Kurt Zellers. He'll tell us why he thinks he's the best candidate to challenge Mark Dayton. We're getting closer to the primary election. There are four Republicans hoping to unseat Governor Dayton this fall. We're inviting all of them on to add issue. This week we are joined by Kurt Zellers. And I should mention that most of the other candidates are coming in with uh, their running mates. Uh, unfortunately, uh, your running mate uh, had a death in the family at the time we recorded this interview and uh, Dean Simpson's father passed away. Uh, 99 years old, uh, was a tank driver in the Battle of the Bulge under General Patton. and. Uh, only the second time in his life he was in a hospital, and unfortunately uh, uh, it was uh, the last time as well. But yeah, he, uh, he's with his family. His kids flew in from all over the country, so and couldn't a, be here with us. And a 99-year-old war hero. Yeah. Uh, sounds like he lived a remarkable life. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the campaign. We sure. wish uh, Dean could be here with us, but yeah. we'll have a chance to talk to him again uh, at a future date. Yep. Uh, let's talk about uh, your candidacy. This uh, race so far has been, i got to admit, a little bit sleepy. Uh, not a lot of TV ads. Yeah. Uh, I know you're all out campaigning. Yeah. You're visiting all the counties and and meeting with people one on one. Yeah. How do you bring people out to vote for you in the middle of August when a lot of people have their minds on other things like yeah. cabins and the golf and baseball and everything else? After a uh, winter and a spring that never ended, so yeah. rain constantly. You know, it, it is literally one on one. You know, I, I make calls to primary voters. Uh, we go to events. Uh, Dean, my running mate, you know, being up from the Perm, New York Mills, Fergus Falls area, we'll go up and we'll spend an afternoon up in his district or in Alexandria or around there and meet people. Ask them to have a barbecue. Ask them to have a meeting in their office. You know, hey, we're going to be over at so and so's bank at noon. We're going to have you come over and say hi to a bunch of folks. They can ask questions. Uh, but a lot of it is uh, is going one on one and going to an area where you know people have had a tradition of turning out in primary elections even though in Republican Party politics it's not something that's common. Uh, how do you differentiate yourself from the other three Republican candidates? Uh, one of the criticisms of a debate that you all did uh, on Almanac over on Channel 2 uh, a few weeks ago and at other debates you've done just in front of groups is that people say they can't tell a big difference between a lot of your positions on a lot of issues. You all want less government, you all want fewer taxes. Sure. Uh, how do you get people to differentiate you? Uh, very simple, and it's the starkest difference between all of us. Is I'm the only candidate that's taken on Governor Dayton. Uh, for years we've heard that you can't cut your way or you can't efficient, make a more efficient and effective government to reduce a budget deficit. You just have to raise taxes. Not true. We took that def budget deficit, $6 billion when we get elected, turned it into a $3 billion surplus. It's such a good idea and it works so well that even Governor Dayton's now bragging about it. The other guys have to tell you what they would do or what I could do or this is how my experience in this would relate to government. I don't have to. I can say we balanced that budget. We did it without raising taxes on a single Minnesotan. And at the end of the day, if we're heading for another budget deficit, which depending on how the economy goes, we could be. Do you want the guy who said he what he would do or do you want the candidate who has proven that he can do it? I have that proven track record. Now, a lot of conservatives were not real happy with the uh, Viking Stadium financing plan. They say when you were Speaker of the House, you could have maybe stood in the way. Instead, you let it go to a vote on the, the House floor. And some of them are not happy that you didn't do more to take on Governor Dayton in that, uh, in that, on that issue where he was a big supporter of public financing for the stadium. Uh, are you happy with the way you, you handled that? You know, I promised a fair process all along. You know, the same folks don't want a dictator in Governor Dayton. I don't think it's good to have a dictator speaker either. I was very clear from the beginning. I don't support public financing for stadiums. I didn't vote for the twin stadium, didn't vote for this stadium, but I promised a fair process to the opponents who wanted it, didn't want it, but also to the proponents who did want it. So the opponents had just as equal opportunity to get the hold of their representative, call them and say, don't vote for this. But there were just as many Republican voters as Democrat votes on the House floor for the bill and the Senate. So. Uh, I think it was a fair process. That's what I promised from the very beginning. I also didn't want to see the Vikings leave. I just thought that the ownership should pay for it, not the citizens of Minnesota. Now, as you head into a general election, if you are fortunate enough to win the primary on August 12th, you would run against uh, Governor Dayton, yeah. who has got a little bit of a breeze at his back uh, economically. Uh, the Department of uh, Economic Development again uh, came out with a report that in June another uh, 8,500 jobs were added, about 10,000 or more so far just in the last couple of months. 
yeah, how do you make the case to Minnesota voters that we need uh, to change uh, horses in midstream? Sure. Well, you look at the underemployment numbers, which I think is even more important. You look at half of Minnesotans are underemployed. So I talked to an electrical engineer that's working at Best Buy. That's not his chosen for trade. That's not where he's being most effective in his chosen degree. And then you look at that, the what I would call employment gap in greater Minnesota. You go and talk to folks in Fergus Falls, Perham, Fairmont, you, know, you name the small town but a regional center, they aren't seeing that same unemployment. They need workers out there. They need jobs out there. And that's the gap when you have a Minneapolis running mate with an inner city Minneapolis running mate, you're not going to get that greater Minnesota perspective. So, and at the end of the day, we raise taxes by six billion, or the governor, I should say, raise taxes by two billion dollars. There's six billion dollars in new spending. And are the roads better? Has the achievement gap gotten better? Do you feel like the colleges and the university system has improved? Yes, most Minnesotans, they say the same thing over and over again. You tax too much, you spend too much, you waste too much. If that's what the governor is going to run on, is raising taxes again, I think Minnesotans have to want government and their next governor to do just like they do in their homes. And is it your position that the impact, the true impact of those tax increases uh, hasn't been felt yet? In absolutely, Minnesota. absolutely. Our two-year budget just ended at the in July of tw uh, excuse me of 13. So all that good economic growth came out of that budget, and it wasn't because of the way we handled the budget. It was because we didn't raise taxes, and we brought a consistency to government policy. What you've seen on the Dayton administration is well, we're for a tax, but then we find out how unpopular it is, and we'll repeal it. Then we're for this one, well, then we'll run and repeal that one. All it does is creates confusion in the business climate, and confusion leads to a lot of cases that business this woman decided, you know what, I'm going to hold off expanding now. I'm just going to let this calm down because I don't know what to expect from a tax policy. A couple weeks ago, we did learn that revenues are again exceeding projections. Is, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? No, oh, it's always a good thing when we're ahead of where we expected. But the four months before that, they were below projection. So that this up and down, the inconsistency in our budget and because of the tax increases, the minimum wage increase, the regulatory problems that are out there, those inconsistencies are keeping Minnesota business women and men from either expanding their current facility or bringing a new project in here and it's whether it's manufacturing whether it's agriculture whether it's financial services you talk to them all across the country and all across the state that inconsistency in government policy or state policy is what's keeping them from expanding so it's not how it, we can be okay but we're not an okay kind of state or an okay country we exceed but you don't want to get in a position where you're collecting too much revenue more revenue than you need Right. Which is the situation we had back in the late 90s, right. early 2000s. Right. Uh, about 20 seconds left. Sure. Uh, tell me, well, and more importantly, tell our listeners, yeah. why should uh, any of those people voting in the Republican primary August 12th, why should they support Kurt Zellers? Uh, I'll balance the budget again without raising taxes on any single Minnesotan, whether they're smokers, whether they're affluent, whether they're small business owners. And I think at the end of the day, Minnesotans want a middle-class dad, married to a public school teacher, coached my son's hockey team, I'm going to be in my daughter's father-son, father-daughter dance contest. They want a Minnesotan that's just like a lot of them. They do the same things. I lost my job uh, when I was working in the private sector. They want a Minnesotan that's just like them to represent them down at the Capitol and to be just as frugal with every dollar they send to St. Paul as they are with their budget back home. You'll be sure to send us some video of that father-daughter dance so we can put the <laughs> Luckily, it's not until next spring. So oh, yes. good, good. That, that will not torpedo your campaign then yeah. in case things don't go Last exactly year it was uh, Gold May Pan, so I'm hoping that it's not this year. Something with ACDC would oh, be good. great. Oh, good. So there is video from a previous contest. That's good to know. Uh, yeah. Kurt Zellers, uh, one of the Republican candidates, one of the four who will be vying for the Republican nomination on yep. August 12th. Uh, best of luck to you. We'll see you on the campaign trail here in the next few weeks. Thanks, Kurt Zellers. At issue, we'll continue.